So I'm speaking with George Mansurai, who is the uh, national president from the uh, National Association of Social Workers in Sierra Leone. Hello, George. Nice to see you again. Um, and happy birthday. I think it was your birthday this week. Thank uh, you, Rory. <laughs> We, uh, I wanted to catch up with you and talk with you and do this interview because there will be a lot of people around the world that will be wanting to know about social work in the context of COVID-19 uh, in Sierra Leone. Um, but just, just to start with, can you just tell us about some of the social conditions of Sierra Leone? Well, well Sierra Leone uh, is basically found in Africa and the west coast of Africa. It's one of the poorest country uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, it has a huge uh, social problems. Uh, most of the services are rendered in the city, in the city of Sierra Leone, in the capital city of Sierra Leone, Freetown, which also is not that uh, available to serve the number of people wanting to access them. Uh, it is even worse in the rural areas, in the rural communities, where they have no access to good roads, no access to health centers, no access to safe drinking water, no access to medical facilities. Uh, people are living by the day. There is the as aspect of hunger. There is the aspect of poverty. There is the aspect of political corruption. There is the aspect of prostitution. There is the aspect of youth violence. There is the aspect of crime. There is the aspect of neglect of the uh, yes. of persons living with disability. There's a huge challenge surrounding uh, around abuse, around social protection. Social protection is basically zero. So, um, um, so there there are immense challenges, and I'm sure that social workers have to work with informal systems of of social protection to to support community strength and uh, uh, community survival. Can 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 you tell us a little bit about the, the the current conditions, the added layer of fear that communities might be experiencing with COVID-19, and what social workers like you are doing to to support communities? Well, basically, the communities uh, we are serving, they already have the experience of Ebola. They've learned a lot from Ebola. During Ebola, they neglected most of the precautions they were told. And they saw the consequences. They saw the effects. Uh, with yeah. COVID-19, they are not taking it lightly. What we are doing is that we are not importing any Western style of fighting COVID-19. We are okay. asking the people, based on their previous experience with Ebola, what can we use within our communities? What can we do within our communities? What resources can we use within the communities? Do we have to buy soap from Freetown, the capital city? Do we have to buy buckets from the cities when we have small-scale uh, uh, enterprises that produce soap? that uh, we have tailors, we have tailoring shops within the communities that produces face masks, you know. And so we are using the local resources, the local knowledge, the local skills, you know, to, 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 to ward off COVID-19. You know, we are using locally made soaps to do hand washing. We are using um, a locally made produce buckets, you know, known as Veronica buckets uh, to hold water. And we are using other traditional methods, like using herbs, you know, that is proven by the people to work, which they use doing Ebola. And they've learned so you're, a lot. You're using, you're using an approach with COVID-19, which I, I, I'm hearing is about community education, but also drawing on community resources and knowledge, and at the same time building the community economic capacity and the community working together to fight this together as a community. Is that right? Yes, we are going back to the community, reminding them of Ebola. Uh, we are educating them on the precautions as provided by the United Nations, okay, uh, WHO. Uh, we are also asking them to also employ their own skills, their own methods of maintaining hygiene and what, they can, what they can use traditionally you know, to keep themselves clean, to keep the environments clean, 
to disinfect their homes, to disinfect their communities, to wash their hands, um, to maintain social distancing, you know, and uh, they have their own way, they have their own methods, and that is working. Well, as compared to the same type. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear about homegrown solutions and drawing on previous knowledge and wisdom. Wonderful to hear this. Can I also just ask a question about the, 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 the ethical challenges for social workers like you in Sierra Leone? Uh, we, we know that across the world there have been many challenges for social workers with a lack of resources, uh, lack of support from government policy and so on. What are the particular ethical challenges that you have in Sierra Leone? Well, uh, the areas where funding is available, you have to follow their own code of ethics. And their code of ethics, most of the code of ethics, uh, work against uh, the people's rights. Okay? And, uh, we don't can, I, can I just check whose code of ethics? The AES? I don't know what that means. Conditions are attached to funding being provided. Ah, from the funders. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks for yes, explaining. And, okay. and we we are familiar with the communities. We know yeah. the most vulnerable. They they are centering their work in cities and big towns, neglecting right. the interior, the hinterlands, where they need the help most. Okay. And so because of that neglect, we are having confrontations with them. They abuse okay. people, they beat people up, they lock down people to stay indoors when they're not providing food for them. And in Sierra Leone, the people are so poor that we go by the day. People go yes. by the day. We have uh, persons living with disability. They only live by going out on the streets to beg. So if you are locking them down without making provision for them, then it's like killing them. It's like killing them slowly in their yeah. little corners. Yeah. OK. The internet's just breaking up. Uh, no? Yeah. So the internet's just breaking up a little bit, so we might just draw this to a close. Um, yeah. I've got a very last question for you, George. Um, what can the international social work do, community do to support your work? Well, there are uh, there are lots of social work-led initiatives in Sierra Leone who are social yeah. workers, they are passionate about social work, and they know the social challenges that we are facing in Sierra Leone. And, and they refuse to dance to the chain of big international organizations who work against the human rights of beneficiaries. Uh, and so we are using uh, donations and uh, philanthropy from within our communities to see how best we can also move on and help. And we are also going out. We are asking for passes. We are asking government to give us passes to work you know, to work with persons with disability, to work with the homeless, and to move into rural areas, to allay their fears. Because in most of the rural areas that were affected by Ebola, when we bring the news of COVID-19, and most of the people in these communities are orphans. They lost all the elders in the communities. So with COVID-19 coming, hearing the news of COVID-19, everybody was in tears and that they are coming to die they themselves are coming to die okay they've got the experience of ebola so we are reaching out to these communities uh, with food rations and uh, with preventative materials and worst of it all because of the lockdown people in rural areas are using their seed, seeds that they banked to start their farming projects next month in may and now they are living on the seeds that they've reserved to grow food for the coming years. Now they've exhausted their seed banks and they're not right. allowing them to go to the farms to work. They are restricted and government is not making provision for food, for health, for anything, absolutely. So except all yeah. social workers, talking to friends abroad, are talking to kind hearts that are lending us uh, a hand and we are reaching out, supplying them some material, food stops, and we are even now advocating for support so that we can help them carry on, continue with their farming next month. So our great plea uh, is that uh, uh, the worst the worst virus for now is hunger. Okay, and if we sit aside and look at them die slowly, then what happens after COVID-19 when, they when they've even exhausted their food bank, uh, their, their seed bank, so there will not be farming. 
if they are not supported, if they are not supported, they don't grow their food to meet up with September and, and November, December, and, and the other months. And the farming season starts next month, and they haven't got seeds in their banks already to grow their food. So it will be disaster. It will be hunger pandemic, and that nobody sees, nobody talks about it. And even now, they are dying slowly. People are dying out of hunger. And people are even frightened going to health centers because of the previous experience with Ebola. When once you go to the health center, you are sick, you are tagged to have um, corona, you not come back home, you die. The experience with Ebola. All, all those that died of Ebola were taken from homes and never came back. Those that escaped, not going to the hospital, treated themselves home and they got well and they got healed. So people are even scared of going to yeah. the health centers, of going to the hospitals, of even reporting themselves that I have symptoms of corona. Okay? Yeah. So we are going out there, dedicating people, talking to people, not not putting up billboards or posters. The people are illiterate. They cannot read those posters. They cannot understand what is on those billboards. They cannot understand jingles on radios. It's us going out there, talking to them face to face. And the people don't understand what is social distancing. You know, we are bonded, we are close-knit. Even in the city of Freetown, it's so crowded. You know, people are so glued to each other. It's impossible yeah. for social distancing yeah. to occur. George, thank you so much for sharing all of that information with your international colleagues in social work. And um, we hear your, your call for support. And if any viewers want to be able to provide support, um, we can put you directly in touch with each other. Um, uh, you've got immense challenges. We know Sierra Leone is the, uh, um, in the, in the top five most impoverished countries in the world. We know there are immense challenges. We want to say to you from IFSW, uh, congratulations for the work that you're doing. Um, we know it's saving lives. We know it's building community. We know it's a, 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 um, developing a, a context for supporting people's self-determination and knowledge and competence and confidence. And uh, all strength to you and all strength to social work in Sierra Leone. And uh, look, again, happy birthday this week. And uh, we look, look, look forward to staying in touch here. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you very much, Rory. Thank you for the concern. And to the international community, we are we are out here as social workers. We are in our hundreds, we are in our thousands, and because we are passionate about the profession, we are ignoring all other odds and we are braving it. We are taking government passes to allow us uh, the opportunity to go out and reach out to those who need the help most. So we are in the front line. Uh, we are cautious. We are taking every precaution as provided by the IFSW, as provided by WHO and as provided by our government also. So we are out there on a daily basis rendering the necessary support, the necessary education, the necessary relationship with the communities, uh, allaying their fears, restoring their confidence that it will be over, it will be okay, life will come back again as usual. So thank you for talking to me and on behalf of the social workers in Sierra Leone. So thank you and looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, George. Go well, be safe. Thanks. Yeah.